Oh. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me hard. And if you died, I know I'd cry. Tears of joy from deep inside. You'll waste away while we celebrate. It may seem harsh, but you're a dick. Welcome to Once More With Feeling, Do, the newest album from Psycho Stick. There's no part one, this is part do. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I had to. I, I had to, I'm sorry. And no, there is no wild flailing and screaming going on on the album. No, none whatsoever. Nope, none whatsoever. So... Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a different review to usual because we're discussing a comedy album and obviously discussing any sort of comedy is um, you can't really tell the jokes. You've just got to say whether or not the jokes work. Yeah, so this particular episode we're just going to be talking about was the music good, did we laugh, anything in particular we'd change about the album, that kind of thing. We're going to be trying to avoid spoiling or spilling any of the beans, which there are many beans, of course, to be had, none of which are coffee. <laughs> are there, is, is there any coffee? I don't think there's any coffee. No, there is. There at, is at one point. At, I don't see any coffee. I got I got soda in front of me, but I don't see any coffee. Oh, I thought you meant on the album. No. Hey. Hey, Rebecca. Rebecca. Damn it. Hire a better caterer next time. Anyways, so. So, yeah. Um, where to begin with this album? Uh, basically, if you know Psycho Stick at all, you'll know that they've been going for, oh, God, it's like 14, 15 years, something like that. Uh, their first album came out in 2003, if I remember correctly. So, yeah. yeah. That would be about 15 years. I mean, they were together longer than that, but their official first debut in the recording scene was back in 2003, yeah. so... Good old yeah. boys. Good old boys doing it forever. Yeah. And um, they've had a few lineup changes over the course of that time. Yeah, because I think Maddie was the last change and he came in in what, 2009, I think? Or was it, or was it later I, than I that? I think it was, I want to say 2009, yeah. I'm doing a quick fact check. Give me just one moment. 2010. 2010. Yeah. I was close. I was very close. But yeah, he's been in Psycho Stick since uh, 2010. So yeah, there yeah. you go. Good old Maddie the Moose has been has been the most recent addition, and he's been part of the band for about eight freaking yeah. years. And the other three members have been pretty much constant throughout. I mean, obviously Rob and Josh have been there since the start, but um, I want to say Alex has been in the band since the start as well. Basically, three of those boys, and then they've had a couple different bassists. They did add a couple of additional band members early on in their career to try to fluff things out but then when alex wanted to go back to college they kind of just almost broke up completely but then didn't they just kept going and that's precisely yeah. why we're here is because of those those crazy people and their weird desire to make things joyous and wonderful yeah. i mean they've been kind of a i need to laugh i'm feeling like shit let's put this on that's entirely why they've now swapped their entire concept to an orchestra band <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Psycho Stick in 2012. What exactly is it like these days? 2012? What? I refuse to acknowledge anything that's happened afterwards because it's just been shit since about 2012. <laughs> so now we're in 2012. Psycho Stick just released their album. Fuck, what did they release back in 2012? I don't even remember. Was it 2013? I uh, know it's been. Oh, it was five years. So yeah, it's 2013 was the last time of their last their, uh, their last album. So obviously we're going to review that one because nothing has happened since. <laughs> Nothing. That's four years. 2014. So. Fine. Revenge of the Vengeance. It's amazing that they just released this album. Um, vote for President uh, Rhino. Let's, let's get on to this one. <sighs> Fine. All right. So this album contains how many tracks is it? Like 22 tracks was in the actual album? Uh, I think it was that many. It was a pretty a good number yeah, of tracks 22. in this thing. It's Yeah. 22 tracks. A lot of them are more skit tracks than fully fledged ones. Yes. Uh like um oh. well let's not Th let's not spoil anything so let's just simply state that it starts out starts out as a musical joke track 
yeah. that then flows into another musical joke track. I mean, the first one's great in just that it's so epically bad. Yeah, it just it <laughs> it gives you a brilliant idea of what the band's like. They'll take the piss out of everything, including themselves. I just I don't know if you if anyone who's watching this has ever seen the videos where they always refer to them as um, truly satisfying videos, but then you'll find a series of utterly frustrating videos that have the same concept like for instance cutting cake or cutting cutting something or and it's always perfect on the satisfying videos you know they slice it into four in a four person perfect pieces for the cake but then you'll come across this one where the guy will just cut it so horribly wrong your brain just starts to freak out because you're like that's not how this is supposed to work that's the first track and it's beautiful <laughs> It's so horrifyingly beautiful. Oh, it's so horrifying. Oh, God. I mean, when it opens, you're just sort of like, wait, what? This is not what I was expecting. And, okay, yeah, now it's what I was expecting. And then it just gets, it just keeps going in such a, such a beautiful way. Like, for instance, when you go into the second song, you can maybe do it. It's kind of just, it's the anthem of today's everything. Yeah. It's just, it's really is. It's just the anthem of everything going on right now. And I'm talking about like in every single person's life on this planet. You're just thinking the entire time going, yeah, that's the battle cry of <laughs> the youth today. Yeah. It's just, you can maybe do it. Oh, God. Just, just yeah. an, an ode to impotent frustration and self-loathing. It's almost like my theme uh. song. Yeah, kind of, isn't it? Yeah. Which is so depressing. <laughs> uh, then, then Tuesday is my theme song, which is not any better. Cause it's just still, it's just so bad. Oh my god! I just, oh. love, I just, it, it's, oh, it's frustrating that we can't go more into it. But it just, you've got to listen to it. Yeah, genuinely, if, if the stinger you hear at the beginning of this and the stinger you hear at the end of this are even remotely good to you please go out and buy this album you can hear good chunks of it on like uh on youtube because i know they've released a few of the tracks on youtube mm. so please go listen to those honestly you cannot go wrong with this album i mean i can understand if you really don't like heavy metal because this one is a little more heavy than their usual stuff yeah with, with the music i mean it's it genuinely is heavier this is my jam this is the area that i'm happiest in I like this is where they're going more into sort of death clock territory. Yes. Where death clock is a comedy band as well, but they're very heavy, and it's more that vein. Uh, there are still a few that aren't heavy, like from the heart. Oh. <laughs> ah! Oh, that is just honestly. If you've ever thought to yourself, man, I really don't like you anymore. From the Heart is the absolute best romantic song for someone you fucking hate. And that's all I can say about it because I've given too much away. But I assure you, it is the ultimate breakup song you've ever heard. Yeah. It's kind of worrying that I've been listening to it a lot in the past two months. Yeah, when it came out, I actually was walking around the apartment singing that to my girlfriend. <laughs> Now, mind you, she had watched the video, so she knew it was from, thank God. <laughs> and she's made fun of me a few times for it, but yeah, it's it's definitely something that's just, oh, it's a beautiful thing. Well, it's kind of like, uh, I mean, we, we did skip over a very important song, oh, yeah. and I want to point that out. Yeah. We did skip over adulting. Is suffering. Which. That's all I'm going to yes. say on it, because the the whole song, everything about it, I mean, the opening guitar riff. I'm already giving too much away by saying that the opening guitar riff is mimicking an alarm clock going off. Yeah. That So I cannot go yeah. any more into adulting, save for the fact that it's the sort of song that all of us aspire to. Yeah, like honestly, to be fair, I will have to discuss this directly with Rob, which... I still cannot believe that Rob is as open and willing to talk to his fans as he is. Mm. I will want to actually ask him directly, is it okay if when I live stream on Twitch, if I can use this album? Because it fits so many things. Mm. Oh my god, like adulting is beautiful because there are a lot of references to uh, nerd culture. And as such, it is... It is just littered with nerd culture. And, and just so many things that are just... 
Oh my god, it's my life. I really don't want to go to work. <laughs> That's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking talking into a microphone and imagining a life where I don't have to put clothes on. I mean, I'm in my underwear right now, so... Anyways. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, just to quickly touch upon From the Heart again. Um, oh, sorry. Really weird way of phrasing it, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, it, it's one of those, it's simultaneously the ultimate in outright frustrated breakup song, and also the sort of song that you could only send as a joke to really close friends. Yeah. You couldn't send that to somebody you just met at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, you gotta hear this song from this band called S -S -S Stupid Stick, or psycho snuff uh, i i don't know here this is song it's called from the heart <laughs> yeah that wouldn't go over very well at all in fact i think you'd be rightly tased <laughs> um yeah it, it really is one of those either someone you're really close to who would get the joke or someone you've just you're completely fed up with <laughs> As I say, it's really worrying that I've been listening to it a lot the past two months. Yeah. I think we need to change that to Do! Yes! <laughs> do, the, the title track, yes. Yeah. Literally, the only notes I've got here for the title track is, um, yeah. Do you get the sense that they decided to take the Doom song from Invader Zim and turn it into an even more awesome song? Because I kind of got that feeling. Yeah, it does have a bit of that feeling. I mean, it's so beautiful in so many wrong ways. Oh, in fact, God. It kind, of, it kind of has similar riffs to that. Yes, it does. Which, I mean, they did a cover of the damn Doom song, so it's not like it's a big reach that they went, we like that, let's make it even better. So Hell, they performed it live when I saw them. Oh, that's sexy. It was a string of the Doom song, uh, reading Rainbow and um, <laughs> Bill Nye. <laughs> uh, of all the things to cover, those three. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> what well, What makes it better is they were doing a raffle, so people picked out some of the songs, and I was the one to pick out that string. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, God. Then we get to go to our first real goofy comedy bit which is the yeah. got no breaks demo something which that they keep revisiting throughout the album so if you <laughs> yes. didn't think you got enough of that don't worry it's gonna pop up a few more times yeah the only thing you can really say about that because it really is one of those if we said that much about it it would give away the joke it's half song half skit yeah if you've ever listened to um Oh, what the hell is the name of that band? The Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, fake Arnold Schwarzenegger band. I oh, Austrian Death Machine. Yes, that's it. If you've ever listened to them and you've heard some of their skits, it's basically along those lines. Yeah. That's the best way you could describe it. So if you've never heard one of those skits before because you've never heard of Psycho Stick, they love to do skits where they just kind of throw in a ridiculous premise, usually involving their music, and then somehow tie it into a song and in this particular case, it's a work in progress. So it's it's a beautiful thing. It's funny. It's great. And every single time it pops up, which it does, I think, two more times throughout the whole thing, it's yeah. just hilarious every time it pops up. Which brings us to the next track, which I believe you decided to post on your Facebook. I misunderstood it, heard the song afterwards, and started cackling maniacally after trying to explain to you how an introvert, introvert party would be possible. Because... <laughs> Why not be the devil's advocate for the wrong fucking argument? Yay, me! <laughs> Jesus Christ, this song is retarded. But it's, <laughs> the thing is, introvert party time basically feels like the anthem, not just for me, but for a lot of my friends. I have a lot of introverted friends, and it's one of those, how are we even all friends? We're all shut-ins, what the hell? Yeah, like this was me back in high school. That, mm. that would be the introvert party time was me back in high school. In fact, a lot of the events that take place in the song was me back in high school. So I can completely understand. I because <laughs> When I started listening to it, and it dawned on me, I was like, oh, that's what he meant. Okay. 
<laughs> well, now I feel kind of stupid, and it's also funny, and I kind of just want to start poking you in the shoulder and making you say, ow. That's pretty much what I want to do now. <laughs> Uh, then the next song is basically a new version of Orgasm Equals Love, only less disturbing. Or well, more disturbing? Equally it's disturbing? It's kind of... Well, it's kind of the inverse of Orgasm Equals Love. Because it's Thinking With Your Dick, a cautionary tale. <laughs> oh, God. Why is it that I immediately thought of, like, Old English? Like, <laughs> you got fucking William Shakespeare up on stage with his crew. Thinking with your penis, a cautionary tale. As he gets up there and starts being dressed up in drag, talking about how wonderful it is to be a feminist with a vagina. You know, that kind of thing. Just just the wrong image for everything. That's exactly what popped up in my head. It's a good one. I do like that one. Yeah. It's a fun song. And it, it really is one of those... Everyone knows that person who has oh, yeah. done things... Well, has thought with their penis... Their dork, their schlong, their piece of pork. Their one-eyed wonder worm. <laughs> their Percy or their cock that you can wrap up in ribbons. But did it win first prize or third prize? That's the question everyone wants to know. But yeah, the, the song is pretty good. It's, it's entertaining. And it leads into track number 10, which we will skip for a variety of reasons, personal and otherwise, and move directly yeah. on to Baconade Cheese and Toast with Sriracha. Which, for uh, some reason, um, is missing several of the words. Well, we won't skip completely. All I'm going to say is I can't personally give a fair assessment of the song Uncle Material because due to personal stuff going on, it's very difficult for me to laugh at at the moment. So it's not fair for me to give a commentary on it. Which is why I'm going to skip over it because I'd rather it be a fair and equal trial between the two of us. So yeah. I will politely skip. Mm. <sighs> Bacon, Egg, and Cheese on Toast with Sriracha was a music video they released about a year ago, wasn't it? Give or Something take. Something like that, yeah. In fact, um, I own the t-shirt specifically for it, and it is a very entertaining song. It's short, it's sweet, it's very specific about a particular breakfast food, and in fact, they had a live stream about it, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's kind of hypnotic with the repetition of those words. All... Yeah, see, I can't stomach sriracha, but my brain's like, ooh, breakfast sandwich. I've never had it. It, it's, it, 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 it burns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have gallbladder problems, so when I say it burns, I mean it burns in like three places. I mean, I don't generally go for especially spicy stuff anyway, so... It's not too spicy. I'll give it that. It's it's like a medium spice. It's not outrageously like, you know, burn the hairs off of your next door neighbor kind of level of spice. But it's definitely when someone opens up a bottle and sprays it on their food and you can you can tell it's not like, oh, that looks like ketchup. Oh, no. When it, when you can smell it, you're like, oh, that's sriracha. OK, <laughs> then you can keep that away from me. <laughs> um, it's all, it goes from this hypnotic mantra into just going all out heavy and it's sort of like huh okay um well that was that <laughs> yeah um which leads on to uh... <laughs> <laughs> best way to describe this is basically the noise you make when you realize you have to get up and go take out the trash it's the best way to describe it and that's essentially what the song is an ode to is that that sensation that feeling of needing to get up and go do something you really don't want to do. And the way it's the way it's framed, it's kind of like a slow romantic pop jazz kind of thing. <laughs> Which is just so many levels of wrong. <laughs> just children in the future. Never do that. <laughs> or do it every time. I mean it's up to you. It's I mean, you know, free world, well, for now. <laughs> Anyways, so the song after that is one of the more entertaining songs in the album, which is Stream Stutter. Yeah. Which I believe most people who don't have great internet, or even people who do have great internet, know what that feeling is. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to or trying to watch a particular thing or listen to something and all of a sudden it stops working. It just it just stops. And mm -hmm. suddenly you have buffering. That's basically the song. It's it's simple, it's great, it's funny. It makes you cry at times. It's so emotional. It's just everything about everything hurts. 
That's the song. That's just the song right there for you. Stream setter. And it kind of feels like a bit of a follow-on concept-wise from Blue Screen. Yeah, kind of, actually. Ugh. Oh, God. That just... Oh, that just brought up some bad images in my head. First it starts to stutter, then you get a BSOD. Oh, oh yeah. That's a, that's a day that just goes straight to hell. <laughs> that, that's the moment where you just... You start looking at your screen and thinking, shall I just throw it out the window? The answer is yes. Just... <laughs> Just yes. Just absolutely yes. Ugh. Then after that, you've got the second part of Got No Breaks, which is even better than the first one. Yeah, because they just go into this sort of existential breakdown argument. <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> and it's isn't it Matty that's the one who starts it? Yes, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I mean, I could listen to it real quick, but I'm not going to because I have to keep my I keep my sanity going. Otherwise, I'll end up just singing the song quite loudly, and that will be a problem. So we're going to avoid that and move on to socks and sandals. And pajama pants. Well, yeah, but the question is, would you be willing to wear socks with sandals? Yeah. So do I. I never... I, I, I've never understood this whole, oh, you can't wear socks with sandals. It's sort of like, why? Yeah, I've I've done it plenty of times and I've been made fun of, but it's like, bitches, I don't feel like getting sand and dirt on my feet when I'm wearing sandals. Yeah, and uh, no, I, I, I've got hobbit feet. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even kidding. I grow a lot of hair on oh. my feet. I've got no chest hair. It all migrated downwards, right down to my feet. Well, you can have my back hair. You can take my back hair, put it on your chest, and we'll both be happy because I've got moderately hobbit feet, but my my hair is fairly blonde, so you don't really see it too much. Although I've got some gnarly tan lines on my feet because I wear Greek sandals everywhere. Much to the fear of everyone around me now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's why I wear socks with sandals, because it's sort of like I don't particularly feel like people seeing my grotesquely hobbit-like feet. Yeah, because you've got dark hair. Yeah. Oh, God. Let's talk about yeah. keys. Um, so there's actually a bit of interesting uh, history behind keys. That was actually written as a means for Josh to improve his music and songwriting. Uh, he did this whole write 20 songs challenge. Um, he didn't complete it, but that was one of the ones that he did manage to get written. And I think he showed it to Matty. And Matty was sort of like, that is a Psycho Stick song. And so they ended up incorporating <laughs> it into <laughs> this. It's got an interesting sound to it. It's not too bad. It, I like the transition like halfway through it. Like it's it's a good, nice little song. Yeah, it's all joke reggae into speed metal kind of. <laughs> <sighs> and next you've got. Grrr. See, now when I saw the title, I was like, oh my god, Invader Zim! And I was sadly let down. Well, that that would be G-I-R as opposed to... I know, to... but I could still hope. Yeah. But this is Psycho Stick. You really think they're not going to spell Gur right? That's true. <laughs> so instead, you just basically just have Satan with a guitar. That's basically all this uh, this particular song is. And it's glorious, and it's sadly only like 30 seconds long. It's, it's sad. Yeah, it's basically... It was deliberately designed as a piss take of, you know how sometimes vocalists will sing too close to the microphone to the point where it's sort of, they're practically swallowing it. Well, there you go. It was a piss take of that. I know all this information because they <laughs> discussed it in their live stream. <laughs> okay, anyways. All right, next one on is Moving Day. We've all been there. It's... I've never moved. What are you talking about? Speaking of which, can you help me move? I got like a case of beer if you want it. I know we can get together and hang out and move. <laughs> but yeah, it's basically the whole the woes of helping someone else move out of their house. Ugh. Yeah, I've done that one too one too many times. <laughs> Again, it's, it's a very elaborate series of jokes, so you can't go too much into it. Some of these are easier to discuss because they're just one joke. Yeah. Like, if you've ever listened to um, the song of theirs, um, oh, what the hell was it? Like, uh, the HOA song, um, Neighbors from Hell or whatever? Loathe Thy Neighbor. 
Lowe's Thy Neighbor. Yes, that's it. If you've listened to that, then you know the concept behind the song essentially in that it just keeps building and building and building and building and keeps getting worse until finally you're just like, okay, I hope everyone dies. I just hope everyone dies. Die. I hate you all. I want the human race to just end. Please end it all. I don't want to be part of the human race anymore. That's essentially what happens in... They more or less say that. Yeah, yeah so there you go. That's 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 essentially the last song. Uh, re- not Rent in Peace. Moving Day. Rent in Peace is this next one. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead by one song. Uh, no. Uh, uh, Rent in Peace. That was specifically designed to be a stylistic parody of Metallica uh, a la Memory Remains right down to the whole um, weird la la la's at the end of the song although the la la la's they do because Rent in Peace is um, singing about Blockbuster which is it's so sad that Blockbuster is about to actually completely fully die because it's been one of those things that's been hanging on due to very specific franchises that managed to keep the name but the ones on Alaska have all completely shut down. I think there's only one more blockbuster in the entire country left. I think... And I believe it's about to close. I think we've got a couple left, but I'm not sure. I wouldn't like to be quoted on that. Cause... Yeah, because I remember John Oliver here in the States was trying to keep Blockbuster alive. Yeah. So he bought a bunch of movie props and sent them to Blockbusters to get more attention on them. Because he just liked the idea of Blockbuster still existing. So he tried it. It lasted for like about a month and then they had to close the shops because there was just not enough money to support Mm. them. So they shut down all the shops in Alaska. So I've heard the last one that still exists exists somewhere in the Midwest here in the States. As far as I know, it's the only one. I could be wrong, but I swear I saw that in the news the other week. So rest in peace, Blockbuster. I used to work for you. It was not a pleasant experience. But yeah, they do actually utilize the jingle that blockbusters used to use um never heard a jingle for them over here but apparently there was a particular jingle they had over there see i don't even remember it and i even work for the damn people and i don't even remember it but apparently they did i can't remember the exact jingle but they did utilize it and after that you've got got no breaks mix final o3 capitalized final underscore o7 so apparently this is the, how many revisions at this point? Because it says 03, but then it says final 07. I'm going to assume that this is somewhere actually around the 21st revision of Got No Breaks at this point. So it's been remixed to the point where it doesn't even sound like the original song. And it has been changed so drastically, it's so beautiful at this point. Oh, it's a masterpiece in and of itself. <laughs> and they're just, they actually, all the arguments that they have previously and the suggestions and everything like that they actually incorporate into it yeah it's it's a train wreck but it's such a beautiful train wreck that you kind of want to listen to it forever which is what leads us into the outtakes oh yeah psycho stick and their outtakes are kind of like um peanut butter and ladies (laughs) what it's a it's a ricky bobby joke if you've never seen patalladega nights the battle of ricky bobby if you've never seen it then you won't get the joke um it's it's a beautiful, beautiful set of outtakes. Um, if you've never heard the outtakes before on a Psycho Stick album, basically they just take, when they, whenever they fucked up trying to do a particular track, they save it, they don't throw it away, and at the end of the album they put together the best stuff and they put it in as part of the outtakes, which this one was how long? Uh, seven and a half yeah. minutes. So it's, it's a lot of good little outtakes. If you've been listening to the album, you'll crack up because a lot of the, ch- the mess-ups are... You know, Rob fucking up because he forgets <laughs> forgets the lines or his voice cracks or, you know, he just he's trying to, like, you know, improvise because he fucks up. He's like, fuck, fuck, God damn it. It's great. It's it's a thing of beauty. It's also worth listening to the outtakes because they have an extended excerpt from from the heart where they just he goes into a really explicit way of how much he hates the person. Something tells me that someone hurt Rob somehow in a very meaningful way, and he had to let it out. Now, normally on a Psycho Stick album, that's the end. At the end of the outtakes, that's usually the end of the album. Yeah. But not this time. No, not this time. I don't know who the fuck did enough drugs to come up with flop. Well, 
but it's it's unique. I, I have a bit of a backstory on that. Oh no! We have story time with Edmund, part four at this point, three, something like that. Welcome, kiddies, to uh, story time with Edmund. I really need an animation for that. <laughs> All right, so you know the whole uh, in introvert party time. You've got the line: "Want to go to a club? Pay thirty bucks for a shot and flop around." Yeah. They actually went. Yeah, let's make a song of that. Ah. I was going to say, because my brain always immediately goes to everybody do the flop from ASDF. Mm-hmm. So as soon as I heard okay. this song, my brain was like, I kind of want a combination between the two. Because <laughs> that would be a thing of just sheer terror. I would not object to that. <laughs> everybody do the flop. <laughs> Anyways, now it's it's a funny song. It's very silly. Now, when I was listening to this, I had just finished, uh, I had just finished the outtakes, obviously. I was mm. playing a game. And then I heard this song pop up and I was like, who the fuck is this? I do not recognize this music. I thought I was listening to Psycho Stick and it took a second before it clicked. It's like, oh wait, that's Rob's voice. Okay. <laughs> what the hell am I listening to? <laughs> yeah, because it's a piss take of a hip hop dance club track and it's all by... What? <laughs> yeah, it is it is very out of place. But basically, it's Lonely Island done by Psycho Stick. That's the best way you can describe it. Yeah. It's it's well done. It's still funny. It's still enjoyable. It is not what you're expecting on a, on a you know metal album. Mm. But it's not a bad thing. I yeah. liked it. I laughed. I definitely had to go back and replay it because I was like, ah, I need to hear that again. So mm. it's it's worth listening to. Like overall, it's a great way to end this end end the album because it's an unusual ending. And yeah. I like those. It's kind of like um, uh, we ran out of space on the CD. It's kind of mm. like that in that it's a great way to end an otherwise great album. So, yeah, I, I genuinely enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, just trying. To... So, uh, final thoughts, I guess. Um... Stay independent. You guys are better as independents than you yes. are under a record label. I fucking love this. Don't stop. Keep doing your fucking touring. You guys are great. Do not stop this. This is great. Uh, keep doing this. I mean, it feels like as they've progressed, they have legitimately become better, sort of technically, everything like that. And at this point, it's t- clearly being independent has done a lot for them. Yeah, because, yes. There's a lot less actual music on this album than there has been in their previous stuff, but that's probably because they've been able to just have fun. Yeah. And not feel like they were beholden to a particular company. They get to make all the money themselves. They don't have to share it with anybody, so they don't feel like they're being pressured to make a specific product. Instead, they could just be them. Yeah. And that, that really shows in this album. I mean, the last couple of music videos that they've released have been incredibly good. It's just been good overall. It's just been fun. It's been simple. It's been good. I'm looking forward to their next parody release because I'm sure there's going to be one sometime this Christmas. Because they seem to like to do a, a, do a, like a, a holiday style song. And yeah. I really hope that that ends up either on this, like down the road, or... What have you? Like everything about this album makes me excited about their future. And this year, I have not been excited about bands I know after the last couple of really awful attempts at finding a good album to review. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at you, fucking Shine Down. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I do feel like we need to say one more thing. Mm-hmm. I wish to read the Read Me Har Har dot text that came with the mastered MP3s. Go for it, dear Psycho Stick fan. Probably Walter or Gertrude. Welp, here it is. Do. We appreciate you buying this stupid, stupid album. The whole surprise nerd new album experiment was extremely fun, and we're beyond appreciative of your patience and understanding. We agree with you. Four years is way too long. We hope to fix that, despite what Murph says. Do is our first 100% independent label-free release since 2003. Our production process is still completely internal, but this time all the profits go straight to Psycho Stick. This is extremely huge for us, and we can't thank you enough. 2018 marked the 15th anniversary of our first album, and we're beyond excited that we're still kicking, making globs and globs of comedy metal. We aim to do this until they kick us out of the old folks' home. (laughs) We're off of Mars. We're going to Mars, damn it. 
Anyways, thanks again. Please visit us online and shitpost until your fingers bleed. Psychostick.com, psychostick.core, store, psychostick.store. What the hell is that? Uh, Twitter.com forward slash psychostick or twitch.tv forward slash psychostick. YouTube.com forward slash Rob of Psychostick. Facebook.com psychostick. Woo! From Rob and Psychostick. I love Rob. I genuinely do. Anyways, thank you very much, boys and girls. This has been Billy, the dumbass Sant person. This has been Edmund Treyhawk. I am hollow inside, Scribbins. Sugar tits. Sugar tits. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much for listening. And remember, this song is not a song. It's a sandwich. Also remember that being an adult is the worst kind of cult. Good night! Thank you, thank you, cheese, our tools, Mr. Roger. Thank you, thank you, cheese, our tools, Mr. Roger. Thank you, thank you, cheese, our tools, Mr. Roger.